Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today with another Borderlands 3 discussion video. This time around we are comparing and contrasting two characters I got my hands on. Those characters are Flack the Beastmaster and Moe's the Bot Jock. Now this video may be a little bit familiar and that's because back at the reveal event for Borderlands 3, myself, Killer6, Fighting Cowboy, and Teft all sat down to compare and contrast Zane versus Amara, two characters that we all got our hands on. But this time around, it's just me and I'm going to be taking a look at the skill tree kind of briefly and vaguely. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody and the full skill tree is available online if you want to take a look into that. But also we're going to be talking about their various play styles for each character and where I think each one fits best. I think all the characters in this game so far that I've tested are excellent. They're very fun, but each one can accommodate to a certain person. So I'm going to be helping narrow that down based off certain people's play style. So we're going to get this all started off with Flack the Beastmaster. And we're going to take a look at his skill tree where he has three skills. One allows him to fade away and into a cloak and his next three attacks do critical damage. Another sends out explosive racks and another is a explosion called Gamma Burst that does radioactive damage and it can also increase the size of his pet. And on top of that, if he uses it on said pet, that pet can be revived. And you'll notice when I'm investing points in this pseudo skill tree that you can access online. I'll have it linked in the description down below. It's the official Borderlands website. You can check that out for yourself and maybe build a character that you'd like. But I preferred building Flack as literally his subtitle, a beast master. I thought A, it was unique, but B, it was actually surprising how competent the AI was when I was playing as Flack. And since there's a little bit of agency over which targets the pet will attack, it made it more enticing to invest in skills like the one where his first pet attack does insane crit damage. And if you increase also the overall damage the pet can deal, you combine those two together. Now you've got a pet that's a real heavy hitter. And what's great about this is because Flack isn't something to snuff at on his own. He's very strong by himself with his own abilities that I mentioned earlier. Mostly if you're trying to survive on your own, I would say the explosive racks as well as the fade away are probably the ones you want to invest in the most. But if you're going full on beast mode, then yeah, you can use Gamma Burst, but I'd recommend the other two I mentioned because then you can rely on your beast and target certain enemies with them to expect them to do a lot of damage. And then on top of that, you can do crazy extra damage with your abilities. Furthermore, you'll see some kill skills which give him a lot of movement speed and whatnot, which kind of reminded me actually of Sirens in previous Borderlands games. So he's really got it all based off how you want to take that path. I went along the path when I tested the game of being a Beastmaster, so I was buffing my pets, but also I was buffing my critical damage and gun damage as much as possible because I really loved the fadeaway skill. It was a huge difference maker when you were fighting some tankier enemies, maybe some bosses, and that's personally the route I'd suggest no matter which way you are going. Now, you do have abilities in the skill tree that allow you to, for example, share health regeneration with your allies, and you can really buff Flax health regen and increase his maximum health. He's less about a shield character and more about the health. And I thought that was quite interesting and a little bit different from other characters that we've seen in the past. So you can take that route if you want to be more cooperatively focused. But overall, I think Flack fits best as a standalone crit damage dealer and having his pets be bonus damage on top of all the gun damage you're naturally going to do just based off the way Borderlands is structured as a title. Flack is going to be a really popular one because of all the ways he offers you to attack the enemy, to take them down, and also all the damage he can deal on various levels. Now, when it comes to Moe's, it's a little more linear for starters. At least that's what I felt because I had 22 free points to invest in when I first started the game. And then when I took a full look at the skill tree after the fact, because I wanted to just make sure I got in there and played the game during the preview event. But when I was taking a full look at the skill tree, afterwards on the website, I did feel like Moe's would become very good late game, like arguably one of the best characters because she's got a lot of flexibility, but early on, I feel what she serves as is trying to soak up as much damage as possible and maybe even deal it back because there's stuff like getting the bubble shield, which gives you 20% extra shields on top of your armor. You can also have it where your shields increase and your weapon damages increase. And the way that works is the system allows her to pretty much start soaking in more damage and dealing it right back out to 
the point where she can then hop out of her iron bear when it's out of fuel and it will continue to run around for another 15 seconds until it self destructs so it becomes another target for the enemy something that draws aggro which then takes the heat off you and your friends perfect in boss fights and that's why Moe's is going to be such a key piece in cooperative gameplay she also has the ability to have a turret mounted on her back so more cooperative focus there she can also help regenerate the shields of allies upon calling in the iron bear there's a lot of flexibility with her here but like I said it's a lot of cooperatively driven skills so if you're playing as Moe's she's not a bad option by herself because look she takes up a ton of damage when she's in the iron bear so certain boss fights that may be more cooperatively driven will be easier when you're with her because she can take so much damage and deal it right back but on the other end I think she'll be a lot more fun for folks when you're with a friend playing so keep that in mind with Moe's she's really good she scales up as you can see with some of the skills I've been using in her skill tree really awesome stuff but overall when I was playing each of them I gotta say the most fun I had was with Flack. I mean, I know everyone's got their own favorite and they got their own interests, but Flack really has lived up to the hype that I think's being put upon him. He's a cool character aesthetically, and just his overall amount of flexibility makes him a very easy recommendation if you are playing by yourself or with a friend, whereas with Moses scaling, I feel some people may not be as patient, and considering the mid to late game with Borderlands is so important, you probably wanna invest in the right person. And don't get me wrong, Mose has skills, like for example, when you hop out of your Iron Bear, you have infinite ammo for eight seconds so you can just go hog wild and shoot everything in sight without worrying about anything so you can tailor your guns that you're carrying to that very skill i mean that's the beauty of borderlands you sort of find a way despite the build of your character but overall at face value i personally liked what i saw inside flak more i thought there was more of an enticement to switch between abilities whereas with moe's it's more so about the attachments on the iron bear so you pick maybe a minigun and you pick a grenade launcher or you can pick two miniguns if you want and just go completely into the minigun tree. There's a lot more enticement to go back and replay Moe's because there's so many ways to do her, just like any other character in Borderlands. But I just personally feel like you'd be best off with Flak Moe's just stick to cooperative play. So hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, you found this video useful between analyzing the skill tree and just getting some hands-on impressions overall from me about playing both these characters and, and who I liked best. Because when they're both on their feet, they feel relatively the same until you start getting some buffs of movement speed for Flack. And not that Moe's doesn't have her own on-foot buffs, we'll call it, she does, but they're more power-based, like the lower her health goes, the more she can kick back, that type of stuff, which makes her a good fit for that cooperative play because she wants to draw all that aggro and why would you want to draw aggro if you're playing single player right because everyone's going to be shooting at you anyway so it sort of limits her build down a little bit at least in my honest opinion but that's just what i think about both these characters based off my time with them i'd love to hear any questions thoughts you got in the comments down below do fire away ladies and gentlemen other than that follow me on twitter follow me on instagram those links are in the description down below along with my patreon do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content i create here stay sexy stay active I love you all. Peace.